What up, everybody? This is the Did You Miss Me podcast, the best storytelling podcast in the world. If you got it, light it. If you want to drink it, now's the time. Oh, he, he didn't already pull this out. He, he got his in the cup. We yeah, finished. man. Yeah. And so we back up in this thing. Joining me today, I got one other than a hilarious guy. First, he's a father, comedian, yeah, producer. And he's here for us today. Ladies and gentlemen, to hear more is here. You know, yeah. and uh, hey, you know, wait, you wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You gotta say husband too. You can't say oh, father without. I'm saying sorry. Husband. Excuse me. I left that yeah. out. Husband yeah. as well. Yeah. Got to get that in there. Yeah, man. Yeah, we we all wear them hats. So, uh, man, bro, thank you for coming on today, man. And uh, for those of y'all that don't know, man, this brother to hear and I, man, we've been friends for a number of years, man. The the, the few, the proud, the brave married dudes that still doing comedy. So uh, yeah. <laughs> every year somebody don't make it. You just say, well, you fought the good fight. <laughs> it's like cancer. Niggas is getting up out of here. They getting up out of here. <laughs> that nigga say you fought the good fight. <laughs> you fought the good fight. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh man. My, hey, listen, man, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Since I've been on this quarantine, dog, me and my wife been happy. We had our yeah. fight, we had our fight the first two weeks, and then after that, we was good. <laughs> yeah. This shit got this shit got crazy. Now wait, are you you still in Atlanta right now? No, I'm in Atlanta. Don't know no okay. don't, don't know nobody here. Just me, right. <laughs> some of the other comics and stuff. But man, yeah, like, hey boys is boys is getting they, their relationships is tanking during this quarantine. They can't man, tank. listen. If you ain't uh I see, I, I don't think me, my wife and I ever have spent like an extended amount of time together like this, mm -hmm. but we live. We lived together before we got married, and that 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 gives you a good gauge view of what you are looking at for the rest of your life if you choose to do that. Cause like, <clears throat> man, if you if you just knock somebody down and y'all ain't never stayed together, boy, hey, you, you was, if you was knocking you them down and then leaving and getting gone, yeah, yeah it's it's different. It's a different life out there right now. Hey, mm -hmm. man, I have probably had a made evaluation for. Or just being in this circumstance, I was like, you know what? If we don't ever go back to fully 100, being back like we was as far as everything, I'm okay. I like this is paradise, yeah. dog. I get, I get to spend yeah. a lot of time with my kids. Now that's the other thing. Them niggas is, them niggas is around here running and moving. Oh man, I get it. My daughter wants to go with her friends so bad. Like she, she, she wants to hang out with them. But uh, I'm like, I don't know them niggas. You know, I'm not ready to die for them. I'm not ready yeah, to die yeah. for these kids or who they uh who, who they want to play with. Yeah, one of her little friends, uh, she she been moving around nonstop, so like she been over everybody's house, and I'm like, yo, you you can't hang out with her. <laughs> that's, she, she been out there too much. Fast ass little girl, not because she going to do nothing wrong, but she she been over too many people's house. You can't hang out with that little fast ass little girl. Mm -mm. Can't I'll do it at all. Back up ahead. Nah, don't you do that. Don't you don't you do that. Can't I can't take mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I, I'm not ready to die for nobody. And my, my mama had gotten out to feeling good a couple weeks ago. I was like, all right, mama, hope that'll work out for you. <laughs> you One of my homeboys, his mama got corona. And then he got corona. Then he started calling my mama because he asking her, can she can she come by and bring her some of the home cooked food? I said, hey, nigga, if you die, I told my mama, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> you can't go over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, uh, we I can't do it. He was like, man, I, I just need somebody to come by here and check on me. I was like, nigga, I'm checking on you on this phone. <laughs> just, right. yo, if you don't answer, I'm calling an ambulance. That's it. I, what, you, what you want? <laughs> somebody to come knock on the door and get that Rona? Yeah. Y'all got a Rona house over there. Yeah. Dear dog, I know you got a story, man, because Didi, you, know, you and Didi talked last night, so y'all got a story. You got a story about uh, Tommy Daisy. For those of y'all that yeah. have not watched episode one or don't fully know, is a reminder, little known fact, if you didn't know, why we call this show the Did You Miss Me podcast. Well, me and D-Lay D started laughing one day about how Tommy Davidson fucked over both of us on the road at different times, totally different circumstances. That was my first big road show. It was Tommy Davidson, me, and uh, a local dude in New Orleans. And the next show I had, it was Tommy Davidson, Earthquake, and me on a road show somewhere. But man, bro, he completely forgot who I was mid weekend. I'm his host. He got me bringing women Mid back the there. Middle of the weekend, told the security, don't let him in. I say, nigga, you the one told me to bring these people in here. And uh, it was it was nuts. He forgot who D-Lay was. 
got drunk. I, got high, hey, I heard, yeah, I heard Delay's story. I'm gonna have to go back to episode one and hear your story because that sounds hilarious. No, so what what happened? Where were y'all at? But that's how we started the show. His Barnell Hill character. Did uh, you see, miss me? Yeah, <laughs> that's what the show is about. So now people know why we call it the show. Did you miss me? Okay, the 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 setting is 2017. It's the All Dev Digital Second Annual Movie Awards, right? <laughs> I'm excited because on the first annual one, I worked for the company, but I was not invited, right? I was no right. part of it. So the fact that they asked me to warm up the crowd for the host, I was like, hell yeah, bro. Like, I'm getting to be around some of my favorite people, right? I remember I'm that, dear. I remember yeah. that. I'm getting paid to do it. You know, it's a real, it's a big deal. This this is studio, right? So I'm like, yo, this shit's right, you know? Um, so I get dressed for it. I leave work, get dressed, uh, head back up there. I'm I'm excited about this, man. I'm standing backstage and um you know, I'm just getting ready. I'm seeing people like just walking around and everybody's, you know, conversing, having a good time. And they're like, all right, then let's 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 get them going. So I go out there and I try to, you know, wrangle people in, you know, it's like Snoop's table is right up front. The Snoop, uh, Magic Don Juan, and like three other like famous people, and Russell's off to the left at another table. I mean, it's it's star study, baby. Right. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I said this is gonna make my name. When I go up here and hit him with this bop, 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 bop. they're gonna be like, oh, who is this? <laughs> Light skin freckle motherfucker destroying, right? Not like that at all. Okay, let me tell you something. Them people give a fuck who I was. I'll go up there. What's up, people? How y'all doing? Hey, all right, all right, guys. Let's settle on down. Go ahead and grab the seats. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing started. And this is like a classy event. And niggas is just like, Shh, whatever, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> nigga, we here to we here to smoke and talk shit and fellowship. Oh. It's a it's an open bar. I'm already going like fighting the uphill battle, right? So uh, people don't understand what, don't, what that does when you got an open hey, bar. Bro, that just like, that completely says, look, there's comedian. Okay, yeah. keep yes. me entertained. Open bar. Hey, bro. Hey, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to drink over Background here. Background music. <laughs> I might as well have been elevator music, nigga. Niggas is getting in, pressing their button, getting in and getting out. So. Um, they don't give a shit with it. And then I don't have a name like that. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even know if I was at 100,000 followers by that time. Like, people knew me, but, like, not enough people knew me in that room. You wasn't an attraction. Like, oh, no. shit. I've been no, waiting to see this. Warm up. I was yeah. basically one step up from an usher at your church. Yeah. Like, they throw you to your seat, and I'm asking y'all to sit down while you're at your seat. And they like, man, shut the fuck up and put on some white gloves. Like, they didn't care nothing about what I was talking about. So, um... At this point, I'm like, fuck it, I just gotta, I gotta get started. I started to try to go into my set, and you know, my set requires you to listen. You know, listen to the guy to engage. What happened? Nigga, I'm listening to you talking about going into your set at a warm up. Oh. Nigga. I'm like, oh, oh nigga, nigga. I know, I, I'm, <laughs> I know what point in time that is. <laughs> when a nigga abandon the warm up and go into the set, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna hit him with what I got. I go into the set, try to, try to, try to get, get them in. Man, they don't give a fuck about my set, nigga. They ain't. I don't give a fuck about these setups and these punchlines, nigga. They don't give a shit, bro. You know, so people already... don't understand. Hold on, you gotta explain it to the folks. Like, you gotta explain when riffing and when yeah. you make the decision to go into the set and why. Absolutely. Explain it to the folks that's watching because they okay. may not understand. So here's the deal, all right? So if you get booked to do something, they 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 are booking you to do a set a certain amount of time. Um, dedicated to your jokes, right? That, that's what I'm getting paid to do, right? right? So after I try to wrangle them in, I'm seeing that they not really listen. I'm like, fuck it, let me just do my job, right? At the end of the day, let me do what's gonna get me this check. Right. I start going into my set, right? This is my obligation. This is what right. I'm paid to do. I start going into my set. When I tell you, it felt like every, every motherfucker in the first six rows just like turned their back and kept talking. Like, <laughs> niggas was like, yeah, yeah, whatever the fuck you talk about. But play what? What's up with the dog? Like, I was like, so at that point, like mid set, I was like, fuck it, and switch and went back to riffing, right? So now I'm riffing on motherfuckers talking wait a shit. Hold on, now wait a yeah. minute. <laughs> he went back. Ah. Yes, I had to, ah. bro. I had ah. to. They weren't respecting the set, so ah. I'm like, well, fuck it. Let me say something to Snoop. Ah. Hey, Snoop, sit your your tall, Q-tip looking ass down. Cause Snoop had on an all white suit. This nigga looked clean and. So he sat down, but then he got back up because I think he was like one of the first presenters up or something like that. Because by the time I got off uh, stage, he was already backstage. So right. I finished up my set, finished riffing, and then I come backstage. Now, this is what a lot of people need to understand. Anytime you're a warm up, 
for something of this magnitude, like uh, an award show mm -hmm. or something like that, it's going to be an uphill battle. I right. had never done it before. I've seen people do warm up at like um, at, at, at filmings for sitcoms and shit like that. Oh my god, cakewalk! The, those people are there to be entertained. It's a way to laugh. Yeah, you, you're dealing with like a crowd of maybe 100, 150, right? Just for a studio audience. And they want to be there, right? Their hope is that they're going to laugh hot, loud enough that they want to get invited back or somebody be like, yo, I like the way you laugh. Come on set. That shit has never happened. But people are excited to be there. Bro, when I tell you that shit is different from doing <laughs> what I did, <laughs> imagine trying to tell jokes for for for. Uh, 700 niggas who just got out of jail. You trying to go up there and tell some jokes about cops. Yeah. <laughs> and women that think they that they the attraction shit. anyway. It's me yeah, and people that's like, no, nah, nigga, look at me. So, <clears throat> I get off stage, right? Yeah. Walking to the back. Tommy Davis is right there. Tommy Davis is standing there. He was like, woo, man. <laughs> you bombed. You know what I'm saying? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I had never met Tommy Davidson before. <laughs> uh, yeah. I had never met Tommy Davidson before. Never a day in my life. Never had any type of interaction with him. He was like, damn, man. I mean, I guess somebody had to do it. Shit, shouldn't have been you. Like, this is how he's, those were his words, right? To you, all like, your life. <laughs> all my and this is somebody I like. I like Tommy Davidson a lot on In Living Color. I like them all. Uh, Black Dynamite. I'm Korean Corn. I'm running things. Of course, we <laughs> love the Cornell Hill. Like I was, I was a fan. I thought he's, I thought he was highly talented. And I'm, I'm still not taking anything away from his talent. This is just him as a personal person, uh, as a personal relationship. That I'm, I'm not a fan of. So, um, I, um. I, I I take my lumps on the head, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey man, I did the best I could given given the circumstance. Like these people don't mm -hmm. know me. You know what I'm saying? I want no liver color, whatever. Whoop, whoop. I go to the back, give me a drink, right? So um uh, uh can I get a paper towel? So fast forward a couple weeks for it, I'm on a plane, right? And Tommy Davidson gets on the plane and he sees me. And I'm thinking he ain't gonna speak because like you just hella disrespected me this last time. So why would I speak? So I just I keep looking forward. You know, I got my headphones on, whatever, whoop, whoop. He goes, drops his stuff out of his seat. He comes back to my seat. He kneels down in the aisle, right? People still bored. He kneels down in the aisle and he was like, uh, hey brother, listen, man. You know, when you're doing comedy, man, you gotta just you gotta just keep going, man. You know, like this is a race, and the more you do it, the better you will get in it. And that's kind of what I was trying to say. First of all, all I did, <laughs> but that's not what you tried to say at all, nigga. You said I ate a dick. You said I ate the dick on stage, is what you said. That's number one. Number two, nigga, don't try to have no serious face to face on the on a personal level when you just tried to publicly embarrass me in front of all of these people. Like, nigga, I reject that. Okay, it's above me now. You got to talk to my manager. <laughs> Thirdly, nigga, <laughs> get your ass back and coach and get the fuck out of here before we close the windows <laughs> so we can close the curtains so I can get my champagne, nigga. That's 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 thirdly, okay? We ready to take off. They ready to tell us how you to were, put our You in first class, he in coach. I'm not going I'm not going to lie to you. I was I was in comfort. But I was close enough to first where they still, you know, comfort, they still extend some of the services. The first, right? So <laughs> I still got in on a little snack basket, and I still got asked if I wanted a drink. So, and I didn't have flavors. I'm all about, I'm all about that. So that's 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 the second encounter with Tommy Davidson, right? Third encounter is this: we're on tour. It's me, Kev, Tony, um, me, Kev, Tony, and Josh, and we are in I want to say airport in Texas. Now, I am petty. And I hold grudges. I will admit that wholeheartedly. That is my cross to bear. I carry it with pride. You understand me? And once I made, I do. I do. My, you, you get to a point in life, you're like, you know what? Niggas keep telling me about me, this about myself. Maybe they're right. And now, now I accept it. So um, I have these strong feelings about Tommy Davidson. I've expressed my interaction. And you're not letting it go. I'm not letting it go. I'm not letting go. We got to have a real conversation on a man-to-man -man level. And we probably never will. Like, he probably don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So um, I've expressed all of this to the to the group. I told them the story a couple times. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's one of those things where somebody else be like, yo, you got to tell them what Tommy Davidson did, and then everybody comes around. 
Right. So um, we're in we're in a hotel. I mean, an airport in Texas. We're about to board. We go over to to board where we're standing, and uh, it's me. And then like Tony's right here, Kev's right here, Josh is on the side of Tony, and then uh, uh, Tommy Davidson is like right here. So he's to the right of Kev, right? So we go sliding up, and Tony sees uh Tommy Davidson. Like, oh, what's up, Tommy? Give some up, boom, like that. Kev sees him and was like, hey, to here, it's Tommy Davidson. Without breaking stride. I was like, I don't fuck with that nigga. Like at that level, <laughs> very audible. I want you to because I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna grip you up like we cool like that. I don't fuck with that nigga. That tone, that loud. So he could hear it and he knows I still have disdain in my heart. We're not cool. We're not. <laughs> We're not cool, Tommy. Did you miss me? Fuck no, nah, nigga. <laughs> no, you ass out of here. <laughs> Bum ass nigga. Queen car running things looking head ass. I don't fuck with you, bro. At all. No, I don't. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> I made it awkward oh. for about, about two minutes. Everybody gets, once you like, if everybody else is cool with one person, and then this one person that's very vocal about not being cool with that person, like that, the way I said, man, I don't fuck with that nigga. The way it came out was so like natural and casual. They could tell it wasn't like, oh shit, he was he was being for real about all the stories. And so Tommy was like, "All right, guys, I'm gonna talk to you later." And he just kind of walked off. But I was like, "Nigga, I'm not shying away from it, bro. You disrespect me on that level, I'm gonna disrespect you on the same." Hey it's, man, that I is level the playing field. Now you know how I feel, my nigga. Oh my God, that is awesome. And listen, we got more what to hear more coming up right after this, bro. Don't go nowhere, which this is the internet. You shouldn't go nowhere. That's just disrespectful to leave in the middle of a video. <laughs> Stay and watch what we have to show you. We'll be right back in more Did You Miss Me podcast. What's up, people? We really hope you enjoyed the episode today. You know what, Bill? Like, we have to remind ourselves and people that we can't do none of this keep giving away all this free content without the people who help us the partners that partnered with us and right. one of our favorite partners are the good people over at manscape yes you know 2020 has been a rough year man it's, it's been, been rough tough. we haven't been allowed to be as hygienic as we like to with all the restrictions on our lives these exactly. days you know what i'm saying but manscape our good friends you hear me yeah i'm doing everything in their power to help you guys turn your bathroom into your very own dong salon this is salon. Your own penis parlor. The penis parlor. <laughs> With all of their great products that are available now in Canada, Australia, and the UK, it's a great company. You know what I'm saying? And they, like, I'm going to tell you, one of my favorite products is the Lawnmower 3.0. Oh, yeah. That thing That's my favorite. Clean. That thing will get you clean. The thing got the stain, got the removable, or replaceable stainless steel blade. It's got uh, 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 skin safe technology helping you to keep from, you know, scraping your. Your joints up. If you ain't ever scraped yourself, it hurts. Uh, everybody didn't had to pull that, didn't pull that old ass pair of wall clippers out the basement. Yeah. With the rust on the side and that little piece that's chipped where you did it and dropped it twice. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And then, you and then hung your nuts out to dry. I know you didn't done it. We now done it, but you don't got to worry about that no more. That skin safe technology on that blade makes for less um, below the waist. Uh, what would we say? Uh, problems. problems. <laughs> Snags, tugs, you know what I'm saying? And and then on top of that, you can use it in the shower. It's oh, waterproof. Man. That thing is fire. 90 minutes worth of battery that you can use in the shower. Now, I don't know who's going to be in the shower for 90 minutes. but Unless you're in there with somebody else. <laughs> Unless you, wait, there you go. Because then you got an excuse. But if you're in the shower for 90 minutes, you're a dirty mother. Never me. Anyway, but not only that, but it's got a light on it. You know what I mean? A headlight. Light. Yeah, pun intended. Headlight. Ha! <laughs> It's got a light on there so you can see when you're up under there taking care of your business. You know what I'm saying? Plus, the shower, plus you can get in the shower with it. Not to mention, they've just released the new Sheer 2.0, which is a nail kit. Okay? Now, we were, we were on the road a lot. You always see me somewhere in the corner digging under my fingernails with a matchbook. Trying to get them clean. <laughs> Trying to get you know, the, 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 the oil from my hair out of my, front of my fingernails before I go on stage. I ain't got to worry about that no more. With my new Sheer 2.0 kit, I got an emery board, nail file, all, all the different things that I need to take care of myself right there on the spot. Hey, man, and you know what's crazy about this? All of this comes in a formulation which is vegan and cruelty-free to animals, man. Dye sulfide-free, paraben-free, 
So you know uh, your disco stick is gonna be in definitely good hands, man. I mean, there's so many things you can get with this thing. You probably sit on the couch right now playing with your balls and realizing you don't smell so fresh. Guess what Manscaped has? They got ball deodorant that's also going to remove any itching, anti-chafing. It's a ball deodorant that stops all your odors below the waist, man. And the good thing about it is because that humidity hits, you know, it, it could cause some problems. I like but, the uh, ball, ball. Uh, let me tell you, mine, I like the crop reviver, bro. Nah. They crop, that, that's a ball toner and spray on toner for your testicles. That means, you know, you ever got your balls that's like too dark? You, your shaft and your balls on match It's almost like they took your balls And put them on somebody else's shaft That's why you got that total To even everything out bro I mean like dog You know And it was a good thing about this Is because you're good friends Of the podcast Did you miss me They have a special discount code For 20% off They used to They used to start at 10 They took us all the way up to 20% folks You do that You go to manscaped.com Now we even got our own backslash Backslash D-Y-M-M That's manscaped.com Backslash D-Y-M-M And you jump your 20% off They also give you some discounts on shipping Bruh, basically all I'm saying is If you love your package, all you do is go over to Manscaped.com backslash D-Y-M-M And get hooked up bro All because we are good friends with our good friends over there at Manscaped And they love the Did You Miss Me podcast And we love them So remember, 20% off and free shipping All you gotta do is hit Manscaped.com backslash D-Y-M-M And take care of it Because nobody wants to be the guy you know, cause my wife, she she was telling me she was like this COVID stuff was going on out here. She said my nuts wasn't looking right, my my stuff was all out of whack. It's hard to get them you to give you the cut, intimate you attention it up. when you wasn't giving yourself the intimate attention you need. And I ain't talking about jerking it; I'm talking about cleaning and working it. So what you need to do, make sure you go over again, manscaped.com backslash d y m m today, twenty percent off and free shipping. All thanks to our good friends over there at Manscaped. Hey, your balls will thank you. Get back to the show. Enjoy the rest of the episode. And we'll see you next time. Mm. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Barry, we never do this. Mm-hmm. But today they're seeing us eat. Show them what you're eating over there. Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? Got a bacon, egg, and cheese on the artisan bread. Oh, I like see. I like that. We got some artisan bread in there. Mm-hmm. And got what happened with me is my wife went to Waffle House and brought some Waffle House home. We ain't mm-hmm. had we ain't had no outside breakfast food. Mm-hmm. Oh, and nigga, I don't know how long. Well, I made some eggs this morning. But I'm let, me the you, let me tell you the simple things in life, bro. Mm-hmm. I got my cup. I got my creamer. Mm-hmm. See, got, I, let I me, let me see what you're doing with your creamer over there. What you what you go up? Oh, ta- this, this is this look, this is bare minimum. This is just so the vanilla, oh, vanilla caramel. caramel. But no, no, it's I, a vanilla I, caramel mix. I'm about mm-hmm. to try that. I ain't had none of that. Let me tell you what's fire though. The cinnamon toast crunch creamer. Nigga. Where you get that yes. from? Ralph's usually, but they were sold out, so we had to go with the, the second hand, bro. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go online and find that. Boy, mm-hmm. that, that coffee, right that there. coffee look, that coffee look good. What roast is that? Mm. This is a um, a cinnamon um, what is it? Cinnamon hazelnut roast or something like that. Hey man, um, I ordered it off the line, and then I um, I ordered from this one company called Black Gold. I mean, Black Brew, it's a black-owned co- uh, coffee company. Fire. Black Brew? Brew. Black, black Brew. Brew. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, they so, out here. I ordered, I, I ordered my coffee from there, man. Support the, so support the homies, man. So they don't understand. We foodies, dog. And I, and, mm. and I will get into it. We, I, I ain't going to deny nobody that's understanding. This Waffle House got a shelf life on it. And oh, yeah. If I didn't get to this right now, mm-hmm. it wasn't going to be no good later on. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going to be nothing for me later on. So, so my coffee, my, cof- my coffee machine is down right now. Mm. That shit got a, a poster guys in it. Gotta my wife had found this uh, thing that makes Curix, mm-hmm. and it's been working fine. Yesterday, I went mm-hmm. over there to to do something, and it just <laughs> yeah, it's going out. Always, <laughs> always have one of these on reserve, man. This French press, Bruh, like, two we, three cups of coffee. That's all you need, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to get one. I'm gonna have to go get one. We're gonna have to make a coffee because it's it's about to be two days no coffee and I'm about to be on edge. Mm, I put the, I put the, I put the cocaine yeah. down. I need the coffee up. So something got it. <laughs> <laughs> something got to get. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> but tonight I have his coffee, man. Let the nigga mm-hmm. have his coffee. Why the nigga drink coffee at, at, at six p.m. Hey man. Hey. Hey bro. What you doing? I can drink coffee whenever. I Kevin I drink coffee you. whenever. Oh boy. I have a good cup of coffee right before I go to bed because the, the warming for some reason like it puts me at ease. 
Yeah. Like, it don't wake me up. I just like to Yeah, it just put you at ease. Mm -hmm. Keep you regular, too. Stomach. Oh, super regular. Yeah. Super regular, baby. Mm -hmm. So, man, I'm going to start with this. And since we're talking and eating food, mm -hmm. take your time. I made a decision when I was in college that I wanted to spend more time with my, with my grandfather because mm -hmm. when I was... When I was nine, we moved to Houston from Chattanooga, Tennessee. So I would only get to see my grandfather maybe twice, two, two, two to three times in a year. And it started, mm -hmm. you know, versus I'd see him every day or every other day because I'd go over there after school when we lived in Tennessee. But now that we lived in Houston, so from the time I'm 10 till I'm like 20, I'm like, man, I want to spend more time with him. Mm -hmm. So I'm in college, and then usually we have to wait for the family to go down there. But I'm in college, I got my own car, so I'm just like, you know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna just drive down there. Yeah. I got a little girlfriend I'm talking to. I'm like, hey, let's hit the road. It's, you know, 12, 13 hour ride, but that's us. We just jump in the car. That's it. We roll out. I pop half X pill. I'm rolling. <laughs> so that's what I decided. I called my granddaddy and he was like, I was like, hey, man, uh, I'm going to come down there and see you. Well, your daddy said he ain't going to be able to come down here for a while. I said, no, nah, I'm going to come. Oh, oh, you're a big man now. Okay. <laughs> okay. You sure you can handle that road? You sure you can handle that road? You know, you're going to talk to you. That's, that's a long drive. That's a man's drive right there. All right, oh. son. All right. Now, look, there is no GPS because I, mm. I have a cell phone. My mm. phone has snake on it, Nokia. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Them Nokia is the hard Nokia with the with the with the little hard yeah. antenna that you can pull out. I had what that. that the brick. I had that. That's it. So he tells me, I was like, well, that you know, I, I ain't got one of them GPS machines. He said, nobody need no GPS machine. I got the GPS machine right here. I got it right here. I can tell you how to get it. I can walk yeah. you from where you at. Tell me where you at right now. I'll tell you how to get there. I'm like, now nah, he didn't have a stroke. <laughs> he got a, he on a cane. He had ex-football coach. So he done got, Ramel, get, get my clipboard. <laughs> he done drew it out. What you gonna do is you gonna get on I-10, you going, going east, you gonna take that all the way to 85, going mm. north, <laughs> you gonna take 85 all the way up in it. Then you gonna get on 285, get off on Brandon Road. That's it. I know how to get you there. <laughs> I know how to get to that. <laughs> now, listen, I can save you an hour. You don't wanna go through New Orleans. You don't wanna do that. <laughs> So you got to take the 10 to the 12 with Slidell, right? Down through Slidell. I'm a, so I'm like, all right, I'm writing all this stuff down. I pack my little bag up, my little girlfriend get in the car, because I want to, you know, kick it with him. Yeah. But the thing is, is that I, I, I just miss hanging out with him. Yeah. So I, I get in the car, packed up, we, we rolling out, we headed down there. Now, I done popped this half an egg peel, so me and, me and my little chick, we, we rolling. We driving, right. driving. I'm in a, a 1988... Nissan Z. Mm. Oh, nigga, you was that nigga in high school, in college? Yeah, I had a Z with the T-tops. Oh, you was a different type of nigga. My, I, my, one of my uh, professors in college, she's an art teacher. She had the new Z and the old Z. Hey, bro. The T-tops. I like that little motherfucker. That bitch clean, bro. bro. Stick, red. I had just got just played his capital, so I was like, nigga, that. And I, what happened was, let me tell you what my dickhead ass did. That, that got me in trouble. I knew I was finna play it, so I went on about the car the semester before. <laughs> so them niggas was hot. <laughs> I pulled up on the campus with my Z2 door, my, my oh. music. I had already started getting the car together. Oh, I, I ain't had no, I ain't had no tag on the front license plate. Uh oh, oh shit. <laughs> Yo, to the best podcast in the whole wide world, best storytellers. We want to give you this right here, an award, award for being the best fans that we got. Come on over to patreon.com backslash did you miss me podcast and make sure you support us join us over there as well as huh get all the new merchandise we got did you miss me podcast.com new merchandise you see it you see it take it in bitches we all up in this thing exclusive content only on patreon.com we black owned so me and my girl we, we popped the xp and we we rolling to my granddaddy house now he don't know i, I do none of this shit of course so I get in the car and my little Z, I'm flying. I'm doing 85 speed limit, you know, on the freeway, you know, 70. I'm yeah. 85, 90, 95. I get out there. I find a Mustang probably about, um, we are right outside, just outside of Beaumont. 
I go outside of Beaumont, Texas, and I find a a, a a Mustang, and I'm like, you know what? This gonna be this my rabbit right here. He flying. I'm right behind him. Mm -hmm. Zip his lanes, man. We keep this shit all the way up. We get all the way down, right down ten, almost to where the junction point is, to uh, where the ten and twelve split up. The, the ten takes you down into New Orleans, and you lose an hour and a half if you don't make that turn. If you stay on ten. And don't mm -hmm. take the 12 over to the other part of the 10. You're going to go all the way through New Orleans, come all the way back up, and then pass over the 12 junction and keep going. So you going. make a big U for the yeah. most part. Gotcha. For the most part, you, lo you lose about an hour and a half to. My daddy did it one time because my mama was driving on the way back. And she didn't know. <laughs> she just stayed on 10. Nigga, we was riding through New Orleans and shit. My, my dad was like, God, hey, Joe, what the, I, 12. No, you said stay on 10, Bill. No, you said, you didn't say nothing about 12. You said 10. You said yeah. stay on 10 until yeah. we all the way home. I said, no. <laughs> so he was high. I remember that argument. So, man, mm -hmm. I see the 12 junction. I'm like, oh, shit. They go to the bridge. I'm taking the 12, going through Slidell. Boom. I pull over, get gas. I call my granddaddy. Now, he know when I left. So when I called him, I said, yeah, man. So I'm here at Slidell. Hey, 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 man, slow that thing down. Slow that thing down. <laughs> I got you on the map. See, when I'm looking at where you left, here you see you left at three. Yeah. You, know, you way too early. You way too early. Yeah. You flying. You flying. You flying. I'm like, I'm like, how does this nigga know that I'm flying? Because this nigga has the map and he's calculating the time. He didn't already did yeah. it. He, he got the compass. He doing this like it's a busy spider by hour. Yeah. You, uh uh, you ain't supposed to be here till 6 30. You you oh, you, you way too early. You way That's too early. Rich. That's it's, rich. It's 4 45. Nigga, I, it's, ain't no way you're supposed to be here this early. Mm -hmm. You in a time machine? I said, oh, man. All right, now, them big tickets out there, them state troopers, them big tickets. Yeah, that's, man. That's, a, that's what he's talking about. It's a big ticket. That's a big ticket right there. So, man, all we push it on in, we get there. I'm juiced up. I'm still rolling. This yeah. pill <laughs> have not went down. Me and my girl done pulled over and got it popping on the side of the road. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm rolling, rolling. I'm hyped. I come in that thing, eleven thirty at night on ten. What's up, everybody? What's going on? I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> that nigga looked at me like, hey, "What is wrong? It is, man. It is way too late for you to come and making out. What are y'all doing?" So I'm, I'm juiced. Right. I was just thinking, man, man, we could just talk for a minute. He was like, "Son, I'm about to go to sleep. I will see you tomorrow." And I was like, "Well, you know, uh, I get a start on the barbecue pit." Oh man, you. Listen, oh man, don't try and bait me out here with doing that, man. Now you, I started up for you, but I, you, said, you ain't got to do that. I said, you ain't got to do that. I got it. Uh, you, know, you sure you know what you're doing on that pit? Nigga, let me tell you something. <laughs> I got that pit going, and I wasn't as patient. First off, I'm rolling. Yeah. So I'm, I, I, got, it's, I see I'm going through the refrigerator grabbing meats and shit out of there. I got the pit going. Man, that pit gets to going. It's so hot. I'm throwing everything on that pit. Way right. too fast. Way yeah. too goddamn fast. I'm pulling shit off there because the fire too hot. Yeah. The fire so hot at the time. I'm 20. My fire yeah. going way too out of control. I don't put yeah. too much lighter fluid on there, everything. So the next oh. morning, he wake up. He come out there about 6. I'm still out there. I'm, I'm sitting out there just chilling. The pit still it still started smoldering down, and we sitting yeah. out there blanket. Y'all just sitting up? We start drinking hot, 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 uh, hot chocolate, having some cocoa. He yeah. said, uh, "Man, what you y'all been up all night? Man, you some vampires, man. You need some sleep." He looked over at the tray with all this meat. He said, "God damn, you cooked all of that." <laughs> so <laughs> let me see what you got. <laughs> he grabbed over there. He bit into it. He had it way. You had it fire way too high, man. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, hey, man, what is this? What the hell is this? They don't waste all this damn meat. And so I'm like, oh, "No, it's cooked." He's like, "You got damn right, it's cooked." <laughs> Shit is tough. <laughs> Ribs tough. Everything tough. Yeah, oh, this pit up way too high. How much what lighter? See, I'm I'm lit. I'm pouring lighter fluid. Trying to because you know when you put a lighter fluid on there, you you're gonna get that. that you gotta let that One, soak off. You gotta let that soak off too. You really ain't supposed to even. You definitely ain't supposed to pour it on top of the grill part and spray yeah. through there. You're supposed to take it up, put it down yeah. there, start it, let it cook off, then yeah. go. Uh-uh, I'm throwing that shit. I'm right back on top. <laughs> That's the shit you're doing in your 20s, man. Man, this, this, this meat is not tender. It's, it's full of lighter fluid. Oh, yeah. And so now he's looking. That meat, will, that meat will absorb that shit if you spray that lighter fluid on the goddamn uh, grill while the meat's already on there. Uh, man, he was so upset. So he was like, God damn, I can't waste all this meat. So let me tell you what we got to do. 
shit. So he, he lifts it, lift it up. Now he tells me, he pointing with his cane, lift it up. So I lifted up the grill top and he's like, push all that over. I said, push all what over? All that fire, all that fire, push it over. Push it all over on one side, push it on one side. So he fussing with me, I, I push all the coals and stuff over, pack it over there tight now, tight. I'm about to, I'm about to save you this day of meat. Go That's get me isolated a, fire. That, an isolated hey, fire. You got it all spread out, everything hot. You ain't got yeah. no, you, we gotta smoke this down and, and tender them back up. Man, that nigga, he put, he had me pack that fire on one side. Yeah. Then he told me to put the meat on the opposite side. So now yeah. I'm, now I'm thrown off. Cause yeah. I'm in my brain, this ain't, this ain't cooking. Yeah. I said, I said, I'm in my brain, I'm like, it can't be cooking. It's, yeah. why is, it's the, 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 sm the fire is way over there. He said, see, yeah, he said, that's a problem. You, you, you don't know. You don't, you, don't, you don't cook the meat, you smoke it. Now we're going to smoke okay. it. You don't yeah. cook them already. We're going to smoke them up. We're going to smoke them up and tender them up. Man, we sat there, and we did that for about three hours. He just had yep. meat packed over there, just smoking it up. Man, yep. I tell you, that meat was so good. I could still taste a little bit of it, but I was like, I didn't know what he was going to do with this orange. The nigga took a whole two oranges, cut them open, and he ran the orange, squeezed the oranges across the top of the meat. Uh, now what the orange did was it kind of like rinsed the meat off, but gave it a, a, a coat of flavoring over it to, to get the char the uh, the lighter fluid taste off of it. Yeah. Then he came by and he did a little light touch of barbecue. Nigga, you didn't even know Man. I had messed that up. I didn't know what. Boy, I, I was so embarrassed about that thing. That meat was so <laughs> shit was like it was jerky, nigga. Like <laughs> shit. <laughs> Man, the old, hey man, the OGs, they will hit you to some game, bro. I love it. I, like out here in LA, bro, I feel like I'm missing that, that uncle element. So sometimes I will go to a barbershop, a black barbershop, even if I'm not getting the cut, just to sit down and see what niggas talking about because I miss that interaction. With you got to know, know what's on their mind now. Yeah, yeah. I, I miss that interaction with, with elders, bro, because a lot of people don't understand, like, you don't, you don't get, you could be book smart all day and still be dumb as hell because you yeah. ain't live life. Like you nah. only get wisdom from living life. And if you were early 20s, mid 20s, 30s, you ain't really lived nothing but you 10 idiot, years, bro. five to 10 years outside of high school. That ain't, that, ain't, that ain't wisdom, man. Wisdom and the people who had to make something out of nothing. You know, uh, we're still dealing with racism now, but imagine what that shit was like 60, 70 years ago. You right. know what I'm saying? They, was, they were in the thick of it. So... I like talking to OGs, man, picking up game of how they, you know, solidified themselves as a, a professional and whatever their craft or career is and how they hop those hurdles, man. Like, that that right there, is, that's prices, bro. I, your granddaddy put you on game, bro. Man, I miss the hell out of them folks, man. I miss the hell out of them folks, bro. Hey, I'm going to tell you a little bit what happened with this, this, this last interaction with Tommy Davidson. So the first interaction in a nutshell was I'm, I'm in New Orleans. I'm with Guy mm -hmm. Black. You, I don't know if you know Guy Black is. He used to run the Foxhole. He worked at KJLH. Look, okay. He used to run the Conga Room. I don't know if you yeah, were on Monday nights. On Monday I, nights. He used to be in there with Fox and Marcus King helping to run the Conga Room. Little short, uh, bald head, man. black dude. Yep. So that's why I got. That's why I got all my residuals from um, Audio. What is it? Audio Hog now, whatever. But when they them playing it on uh, Foxhole Radio, I didn't even know I could get paid off of that, bro. I'm talking about damn near ten years later. People was like, "You ain't got no money," but I was like, "I ain't know." I signed up for that shit. That first check came, I was like, oh, okay, God. Bro, you made you made made money with that, man. And that was yeah, like, bro, easy, easy, easy money making coming through. People don't know I got, I got them residuals, So yeah. I'm uh <laughs> I'm over there running around with Guy Black. Now Guy Black helped me get started in comedy because him and my dad were really, really cool when I was coming up. And I always call him my uncle guy, but he worked at a radio station in Chattanooga. Uh, WJT, WJTT Power 94. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, he had a morning show there and he used to do giveaways. And my daddy was a principal at the, like the black, the real black high school that was in that city. Uh, Howard High School was like one of the most popular black schools that was there, but right by the project. So this like the school, like if you're going to come to town, you come into this part of town to come to this school or this area to be, you know, to touch the community. So when, when musicians would come through like Luther Campbell and, uh man, all them old school, old school rappers and troop, Big Daddy Kane. I got an actual picture where you would see me chilling with Big Daddy Kane. Had no idea who the nigga was. I was like six years old. But everybody was like, look at this, this rap roll to you around. But it was all because of Guy Black. And so yeah. my daddy was teaching Usher at the time. He was one of his students. And so he was helping Usher in the, the group that he was with 
get with the uh, with Guy Black on the radio. Guy Black was like, "Oh, them niggas are right, but they better not get no babies. Them niggas gonna be done. They gonna be finished. What, what they need? What they need? Uh, uh, another new edition for? We got a new edition. Them niggas ain't better than Bobby Brown. I remember this shit to the to the day. Usher, lo and behold, left the group and blew up by himself. But it's just funny how niggas count you out. Like, I didn't even sing. He ain't all that though. You <laughs> know, like he ain't um, shit on Bobby Brown. I remember hearing this conversation. So. What, it's funny, when I got older, I'm like 23 and I started doing comedy. Um, I had been in the game about three years. I've been doing it. So I need I hadn't got no real road show. And so he invited me to New Orleans to come down there and do the show. Tommy's headlining this first weekend. So I go down there. I'm I'm amp. It's Tommy Davidson. I'm I'm I got my set. I'm finna kill him. Everything going good. I'm the first show come. He don't even say shit to me. I'm I'm so focused on the show. I'm I'm on it. Boom. Smack the ass. I get off and uh he was like, hey, man, hey, that's where you started up. That's where you started up. Yeah, we, I mean, was it just us? We just got to deal with this by ourselves? I guess we just got to deal with this all weekend, man. What we got? What, what kind of talent we got out there? I'm like, what you mean? Talent, man. Look, read the room. Talent. Uh, <laughs> talent. Hello. She's talented. She's talented. That's talent. I'm like, oh, ho, nigga. I'm, I got you. So you on hoes, I got you. So I go get some girls. Now, Guy Black, they don't got no green room in this club we performing in. So this nigga rented a charter bus, one of them like uh, tour buses, but yeah. they don't got all the tour bus amenities. It's like a like a party bus for what we would call today a, a party or a sprinter bus. Right. It, it was like one of those, but it was really just one of them decked out charter buses. Right. So that's our green room. Really, his green room. I, you know, I wasn't supposed to get shit, but he was like, "Yeah, man, just get whoever, bring them back here on the van." We're going to kick it. We're going to party. Got everything in here. I think it got all type of shit. Drugs, everything in the goddamn bus. So we right. keep, I keep bringing girls in there. It's it's uh, it's it's hype. Every, every show, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. After the show, we we kicking it. Tommy getting drunk. We dancing. We partying on the bus. Girls, we on there kicking it. We, you know, taking shots, toasting and shit. The next day, we get there. Same shit. This is Friday. Saturday. We own it. Sunday night. Sunday night, I'm walking with my regular little thing. I'm just getting off. I walked to get on the bus. It's a nigga with security guard outfit on. And he's sitting there like this. Yeah, man, nobody's on the, nobody's coming on. Nobody's on the, nobody. Tommy don't want to see nobody. I said, no, 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 man. It's me. I'm on the show. I'm in the green room. I got the girls with us. We finna, no, nah, man, nobody on the show. And so I said, man, he the one told me to come over here. Right. So I said, just. Tell him he knows me, Billy. He, I'm two nights. What you talking about? I'm like girls behind me. I'm like they tripping, man. He, he's he's new. It's your first night here, right? <laughs> ah, exactly. he's he doesn't new. know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. So he goes and gets Tommy, and, to, and, to, and I can see Tommy through the tent, and he's like this. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I say. That's wow. I'm like, I'm like, I say what the fuck? And so I go to my uncle. I say, oh, I say, man, what's up with Tommy, man? What the fuck? Listen, nephew, that's why I tell you, stay off the drugs. You ain't going to remember shit. You'll be in a daze. You will be in a daze not knowing nothing. Y'all was up there drinking and shit. You just drinking. That nigga was on drugs. <laughs> I said, what does that mean? He said, he don't remember none of that shit. He don't remember none of that. He never remember you when you leave here. I said, I said what you mean? He's not going to remember. I was just in there. We were taking, yeah, 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 nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, wow. nigga, I'm, I'm hot. I'm so hot. I'm like. So I went to the nigga afterwards after the show because I know where we're going because we at the same hotel. I see him in the lobby. I said, "Tell me, hey man, sorry, um, stuff got crazy tonight. By the time I realized you were outside, I was already in the back getting ready to go on, and I didn't know what was going on. So, man, I'm sorry, man. That's just crazy. Uh, I'm gonna catch up with you. Uh, matter of fact, call me, and uh, I'm gonna put you <laughs> on. Uh, my guy, he runs the comedy store. He runs it. I know them." You come out, I got you, man. Come. That nigga really and, is Barnell Hill. Nigga. And that's where I was like, I had I watched those episodes, but I did I just knew he was, I thought it was for real. Like, nigga, this is the real thing. Seeing that nigga again. Hi, man. How's it going, man? You, uh, you look familiar. What's your Oh my nigga, god? Nigga, it's me. Yeah, bruh. That so, nigga really is Barnell Hill, bro. Man, he really, he really is Barnell Hill. Hold on a second. Joining us here today, man, coming in this thing. Damn fool is in this bitch with us. So uh, we, we need deep, we need deep in talking about Tommy Davidson. So this one night in particular, I'm going to the Congo room to meet uh Fox, uh Guy Black, Marcus King. Marcus King is managing me. 
Of course, Fox is there. We just did his Friday show uh, that past weekend. So now we got the, the, the night at the Congo room and then God Black is there, but I got to help him set up the equipment so we can broadcast because I got my show on Sirius on Foxhole over there. So he's like, we're going to record some segments live with the comedians. He's like, yeah, I want you to go back there and talk to the comedians and shit. So I get up in that bitch. We in the Congo room. We on, I'm kind of like in a little side area or by that back bar that's behind the stage, you, by the stage. There's like a little stage area. Mm-hmm. It's a little yep. side bar. Okay. So I'm over there. I got a little table. I'm over there. I'm interviewing the comedians that's coming over. I see Tommy Davidson. Tommy walks in. I'm like, hey, Tommy. So I'm yelling because ain't nobody on stage. Niggas is playing music loud. Tommy. Right. Well, he, he comes over. Hey, man, what's up, man? What's up, man? What you doing out here? I was like, I live here, Tommy. I saw you a couple weeks ago, and, and, and you was coming out the factory. I said, what's up? And you just looked at me. You, you, you hit me with the point. That was you? No. Man, I didn't know you were here. So what, I mean, so um, how's stuff going with the singing? The singing going OK? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I said, hey, look, everybody started laughing. I th- I'm in my brain, they laughing because they think he's joking. I know he don't have no idea who the fuck I am. Right. So now I'm just going with it. So uh, that little situation that they got you in over there, over at Epic, did it come out all right? I mean, the last time I saw you, man, it was it was pretty crazy. And so now the other comics and shit, they're around. They're out there around now, now they trying to figure out what the story is that I got. Right. He's it's like, hey, you know what I got with me? If you need me. I know you are here in town. I don't know how you're here, but I got you. Like, you got me. This nigga thought you were genuine. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck he thought I was. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I was come on, man. Come on, I, come yeah. out of me. I got some. I, I got, yeah, like, yeah, I'm all right. So I follow him, I'm walking. Boom. Walk in the bathroom. Boom. It's like, all right, man. Here it is right here. Gordon, hurry up, man, before somebody comes in. Looking, looking. I'm like, I don't see no smoke. <laughs> I said, where is, oh, it's right where? It's, it's right here, man. I'm like, is this nigga holding the blunt and he's, it's lit inside? It's right here in my hand, man. Here, here, hurry. Nigga, when that nigga opened his hand up and it looked like three crushed Altoids is in that bitch, I said, oh, oh, that's what it is. The door opened up, got black walked in, and I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, did you Mr. miss me? Mr. God, God damn. damn. <laughs> Took their ass around the world and dropped their ass off. This is the best storytelling podcast in the world. Once again, I am Billy Sorrells. Joining us today was to hear more. To hear, hey. tell them where you can find them at, man. Uh, man, you can find me on all platforms at to hear more. That's T-A-H-I-R-M-O-O-R-E. Uh, now tell us about yeah. all the podcasts you got, bro, and all the stuff you got going on. Um, I got Damn Internet You Scared with my co-host Patrick Cloud. Man, I had uh, fun coming over there to do yeah, that. Yeah, man. We, we had fun over there. Then I also have uh, uh, the best silent uh, listening party. We do that every Friday. That's me, Joshy Guns, and Tony Baker. And then I do Zoom in with the homies Monday through Thursday on my YouTube page. You can check that out. Uh, that's 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 11. And then uh, my new show, Word in His Heart, man, is doing really well on the, on the wave. So... That's also on my YouTube page. So, man, yeah, I got, I got. Comments. I gotta come over there and do word in his heart, man. I want to see. I would love to have you. you know what I'm saying? Come what is it again? Word, word in his heart. heart. Word in his heart is a is a show where uh, me and my guests we both have five index cards, and the, and the cards have like just ridiculous words on them that you we try to pronounce and try to figure out the uh, the definition of, and it's basically like a round for round type thing. And then uh, at the end, there's a, uh, the, the bonus round where you get a little extra bonus points for saying this, like, tough-ass sentence. But you got to do it in under 10 seconds with as little errors as possible. It's just a lot of fun, man. It, it, I had uh, T.I. on the show. I would love to do that. That's oh, great. man. It, bro, when I tell you, T.I. T. I. I held it down. That nigga was, that nigga was different on the show. Uh, actually, he was the same. He was the same big word user motherfucker. He was talking to me like a college professor, like community college, but a college professor nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, man, but it's a lot of fun, man. Uh, we got a lot of big names coming up too. We just waiting to get back in the studio and, and and hit it full speed. But we got enough to carry us through for a little bit. Man, well, I'm excited, bro. Thank you for coming through and blessing us, man. We're gonna Absolutely. try and get him to hang around and kick it around for the after party, or maybe catch him on Patreon for some. Uh, I'm glad you asked questions. But again, to hear more, man, my boy, damn fool, we had a great time. And make sure you check us out. This is the Digimission Podcast, the best storytelling podcast in the world. We'll see you next All right, time. Now.
Peace.